Today's Q&A is should I make my personal details public or accessible uh, when I'm starting an interior design business? This is uh, a really important question because um, back in the day <laughs> when you had an office and um, you there was no fear of having um, your you know your home address or personal mobile number uh, accessible to everyone uh, this is you know it wasn't that much of a worry because we had offices and um, uh, business numbers and that kind of uh, limited company structure typically was um, uh, or even like a partnership was was very um, protected in terms of like being able to separate separate personal life from private life uh, personal life and private life from uh, your business life these days, a lot of uh, startups are actually working from home. So they're using their mobile devices and they're uh, working or starting the business from home because it's cost effective um, and uh, startup costs are very low. Um, uh, and it obviously makes a lot of sense because you don't need much to become an interior designer or um, start your architecture business as well. Uh, all you need is pretty much your computer and um, all of depending on the services that you're offering, um, the things, pretty much the things that you can have in one or two rooms of the property. So should you publish your, your details? Well, obviously it makes sense if you're a limited company. Yes, you would obviously do that. Um, when I first started, I do, uh, I still um, work under, under a limited company structure, but um, my business is registered, but now that I work from home, I use my home address and I, um, at the beginning, I put all of my details uh, online and um, I never had an issue. I had an issue once and probably that was the, um, it was one time somebody weird called and I got a bit afraid. So, you know, if there's a legitimate reason for you to fear for your life or um, if you've had a stalker or, and, you know, I've had students where they have had these things, it really doesn't happen often. So in the hundreds of students that I've had, I think it's happened twice. Um, and it's, it's typically just kids playing around or just like someone's just a bit weird. These days there are, you know, well, there's protective measures in place to protect you when something like that happens and so obviously you would follow procedure for that but um, typically it's not a worry and um, unless you have um, you know it, um, you are under protection because you have had a, a, a stalker and it's been um, monitored um, there really isn't anything to worry about um, obviously after coronavirus there's been a lot of um, increased traffic and use on the internet so uh, even just a couple of years ago this wasn't as much of an issue or worry although even you know um, when I started my business I was worried that's why um, I used my uh, limited company address so uh, instead of my own ultimately I changed everything um, and this is now what I, I would guide you to do is unless there is a legitimate worry um, it's it's highly unlikely that you're going to have an issue with somebody contacting you and the main reason you would want to put your um your details or to make yourself accessible is to make it easy for clients to contact you because as a startup traditionally um that's the hardest part <laughs> is to um get kind of that conversion or somebody to actually start reaching out to you and at the beginning you're really only getting really about four types of people contacting you. Firstly, they'll be spammers. <laughs> um, and you know, in a way, they're kind of not that, yes, they waste your time, but um, you know, at least it means you're being found online. So I think I would see that as a benefit <laughs> rather at least than at the beginning. Yes, later on in business, and I'll talk through that when what happens when you're no longer a startup and you're like maybe um, at a different stage of business, but Right at the beginning, if spammers are contacting you, I'd see it as a good thing because it means you're being found online. So they're typically the first type of people that will start contacting you. Secondly, if you're in architecture and interior design, you will start getting trade calls. 
And these are positive calls because um, yes, they are time consuming and typically there's somebody introducing themselves about their own business and trying to sell you a product or trying to find a way to work with you really. Um, and I would see this as a positive as well, mainly because um, you're getting access to potentially, um, you know, exclusive discounts, um, really decent uh, potential trade contacts that uh, you may never have found yourself. If they're a startup themselves, that's typically people who cold call um, or really established businesses, typically no one really in between because they don't have the uh, capacity to do that. Um, you like established firms have bigger resources that, are, you know, that's why they're reaching out to you. So they're going to have like, you know, decent, um, you know, you'll get the trade account manager and all these things that are going to be beneficial to you so it might be worth listening to what they have to say um and also you know if they're a startup you may have access to real exclusive um deals with them and uh that might be a very fruitful relationship for the rest of your career so not something to kind of pass off too soon because it might be a little bit worthwhile to listen to what they have to say the third kind of person that'll listen uh, that will uh try to contact you is obviously your clients <laughs> so um, these are the people you actually really want to contact you and the harder you make it for them to find your address or your phone number um, the harder they're gonna just go somewhere else they're gonna call the person that they can quickly just find the number and call <laughs> you know and I know that um, you know there are exceptions where someone's like they're so in love with the work you do they will do anything they'll find a way to contact you but if you make it hard, it's just, it becomes frustrating. So no one's going to sit there and say, oh, well, uh, I'll do anything to try and find Joe's number because um, I just, she's got to be my designer. Um, especially if you're a startup, <laughs> it's highly unlikely. So they're just going to get frustrated and they'll go somewhere else where it's easier to get in contact and speak with somebody. Um, and... Uh, Finally, the last kind of person that will contact you are really, um, you know, those scary people. <laughs> and this is, you know, it's it's rare. It's like one in, it really, it really rarely, rarely ever happens. And to have all of those or to have the trade people and the clients potentially not call you because of someone that might contact you, in my opinion, as a startup is a bit silly. And, you know... I did it myself, so I understand, and um, it's a question I get asked quite a lot as well, so I do understand that it is a legitimate worry, but um, it's very rare to even get contacted like that, um, and if it does, it, it really never ever leads anywhere, but if it does, obviously, you know, you've got a way of dealing with it, and it's, you know, you take it to the police and um, sort it out quite, um, well, at, in normal procedures. So when would it be wise to take it off? <laughs> so in my own experience, um, I work with international clients. So I had my mobile number on the on my website for a really, really long time. And um, I had to, well, in the end, because we started the school and um, I... We, we it's, a, it's a different business, but because people can find uh, a mobile number for me, <laughs> I ended up getting students calling, you know, calling my mobile, um, just telling me that they can't make the call on Saturday, for example. So that became a little bit inappropriate when that number was for my clients, especially my international clients, who um, it was easy for them to contact me um, because like for my, my architectural interior design projects, which is what the number was there for typically. So um, I did take my mobile number off my website because of that reason. Um, and, you know, I did see a drop in international court client calls, especially um, when uh, we were, like the way I was getting those clients at the time was, uh, was through my website. So because of that, that, um, you know, it dropped from like four or five calls a month to about one to two. So, you know, less than half. So you can see even 
just taking off a mobile number or even a phone number for people to contact you can literally drop your like your your sales calls by half so um or cold leads by half so that's in my own experience how like how dramatic the change was so i you know personally if that if we were still using my website as the only source of getting international clients i would just um, find a way of dealing with the students and um, put my uh, mobile back up but um typically you know if if there was um it, again if that was the only avenue that um people were contacting me i would find a way to make sure that it, i made it easy for people to get in touch with me so i hope that answers this question if there's um you know a legitimate reason to not have your um your details public um you know take them off again it will affect your sales and your cold leads if you're using your website or um, social media to uh, for people to find you and at the startup stage typically that is how people are finding you because you're new there's not a lot of content about you out there um and um you know word of mouth is one way of getting business but it's not a reliable continuous unless you have you know a, a regular source um of of referrals um and taking a, a, having it removed um or not having people be able to uh, contact you i mean having an email address is you know basic at least um, address may not be required, but typically for, for Google results and search locations, it is important. Um, and, you know, when it comes to clients, people will want to speak to the person um, on the other end. You know, with low cost services, it may not be the end of the world, especially if you've got a specific type of client and you're getting leads or you've got, you know, a lead magnet or you're working in a particular way where, um, you know, they don't pick up the phone call, phone to call you and ask you about your service. Um, that, that could be, uh, you know, fine, but typically, uh, you know, you're not using a scheduling app or something. And, you know, for some people that could be really, it's just too much effort uh, for somebody who just wants to ask, um, can you just explain a little bit more about your services? And um, typically that's how, uh, you know, at least domestic clients will work. Um, and it, or even my commercial clients. And when they can't just pick up the phone and speak to you, they'll just go somewhere else because they just get frustrated and they don't want to book a call with you. <laughs> it's like, who wants to like sit there and schedule a call it's i mean some people will do it um it makes you look um like you're really busy but um how many people are you really turning off and um you know the argument is sometimes that they're not your ideal client but many times they are <laughs> so uh if you wanted a really great job and i know from you know a lot of clients that i've had uh sometimes if they didn't get a chance to speak to me i would not have won that job and when I spoke to the client afterwards and they obviously had chosen me as their designer, I'm really grateful about the process um, and that they did choose me because they were fantastic projects. So um, I really have no regrets, um, especially for what were in my case, illegitimate fears about people contacting me um, uh, uh, or, uh, you know, judging me because of, oh, they could see where am I, where I lived or they could see, you know, people are, going to check out where you live but um if they're not your clients does it really matter you know that's i suppose a whole nother q a video but um it's uh ultimately if you're running your business you're getting clients you're doing the job that you love um people can think what they want you're the one um living the dream so um in my opinion I would say yes in you know 99 percent of cases it is it would be better to publish um, you know, your address for um, Google search results, your phone number so that your client can contact you. Um, it doesn't have to be your mobile. I did mobile specifically, obviously, because of my international clients, but it could just be a landline number or an actual business number or another paid number that you redirect to your mobile. You know, there are really lots of options. So, um, and you know, you don't have to put your own address. You could put your accountant's address. 
um, another business address, you can pay for a PO box. So yeah, there are so many other options. I would just make sure that you find a way to make it easy for your potential clients to contact you. Um, because as you know, the harder it is, uh, or the more confused they are about or frustrated to speak to you, they, they're just going to go somewhere else. And it's not what you want as a startup. So hopefully that answers uh, or gives you enough information for help to help you get, uh, make a decision for yourself because obviously everyone's different and um, you may still choose that, um, you know, there is too much risk. You've got, you know, really young kids or something that uh, makes you feel uncomfortable with, um, with where you're located or, um, you know, it could be a real problem and you decide it's not for you so that's just my experience um i've now seen it with hundreds of students so um it's really like in literally 99 percent of cases it's it works better to have uh, your details accessible um uh unless obviously there's danger of you know personal data being um stolen or um used in a compromised manner so I think that's it uh, I don't think uh, there's anything else if you do have extra questions um, especially in regards to this video just post them underneath and I'll, I'll do what I can to guide you in the right direction